Well, hello, Internet, and welcome to part six of my XML video tutorial. Today, I'm going to be talking about XML schemas, and I'm just going to jump right in here and start making one, and we're inside of Eclipse, just like always. I'm going to go to Source here, go to New, and then I'm going to go to Other, and then inside a little wizard that pops up in the XML folder we have here, I'm going to choose XML schema, and an XML schema file is just used to describe an XML document, just like a DTD. The only major difference is that you're going to use very specific data types and also be able to limit what type of data is put inside of different elements that are assigned to the XML schema file. All right, then we're going to click on next, and I'm going to call this baseball players.xsd, and all of the code that is in this tutorial is available in a link underneath the video. And then we're going to click finish. And then the file pops up inside of here, and here we see the version of XML and the encoding, and I'm sure you understand that. And I'm going to go through here and make a couple changes and also organize this a little bit better. First thing I'm going to do is go up here and add XS to this, and what this is is called a prefix. And this line in general is going to declare which our URL is going to be assigned to all of the different elements that is contained inside of this schema. And it's also going to state that XS will be used to separate all of those elements that are assigned to this namespace. And I'm going to get more into namespaces here in a second. It's basically just a unique thing that exists that's going to be directly tied to this called a prefix so that we're able to separate and know which elements we're going to be using. Like I said, put that on pause because I'm going to get more into that here in a second. Right here on this second line and I'm going to go in here and actually put my URL inside of here, right like that. I'm going to define the namespace that's being used for elements in this schema, this very personal document that I'm creating right here for myself. And then this guy down here, I'm actually going to give this a prefix as well, NTTBP, and I'm just going to copy this right here and paste this inside here, and now I'll explain exactly what all this stuff's doing. Basically what you do is you use namespaces to group your tags that you're going to be creating inside of here. Remember, a schema is just like a DTD. You're going to define all of the tags that you're going to have in the XML files that relate to this. So for example, if you decided to use table inside of your very customized XML file, well of course there is already an HTML tag called table. So in this situation, if you would want to separate your data from the HTML tags, we would just go NTT BP and then put a colon inside of there. And then of course in the ending tag you do exactly the same. So that's exactly what's going on here. We're assigning this, which is called a namespace, which is just a unique thing. That's all it is. It doesn't really even have anything to do with this. This isn't a file. This is just a unique location, a unique ID, like a social security number or something like that. And it is assigned to a prefix that is then going to be used inside of these element definitions where we're defining everything. But throughout this guy, we're actually going to be using XS a lot because we're going to be using a lot of standardized schema tags that are already defined. And the only thing you're going to have to use this prefix for is actually actually going to be the excess is for all of the main global elements that you define as well as their children. However, you do not need to use this prefix whenever you're using or describing attributes. And as we go through here, you'll understand this a little bit better. And this guy right here is actually what is called a URI or a uniform resource identifier. And also, if you wanted to, you could put a version number at the very end of this, and that would be perfectly fine. And that would allow you to have multiple different schemas and different locations if you decided to change different things inside of here. And even though it's very commonplace to use a URI inside of here, just like we have here, we could also come in here and use a uniform resource name instead. And how you would define that instead is to type in URN colon and then basically the exact same thing we have right here I'm going to change slightly so just copy that throw that down inside of there and the only thing that we'd have to change inside of here would be to put a colon right like that and you could throw that guy in instead of this URI that's here but like I said that's not really commonplace to do I just wanted to cover it and then this guy down here element form default qualified means that all elements used must be namespace qualified and only top level elements are included by default so that's just basically saying that if you're going to have this right here that means that all the tags that you're going to define are going to have to have this prefix in front of them as you're going to see here right away then what I'm going to do is if you'd like to use an annotation instead of a comment to pass documentation information to users of your schema this is exactly how you do that you're just going to type in access you're already using the prefixes and type in annotation 
throw in a closing tag. Then you're going to type in XS documentation. And then you could just say something like this XML schema will be used for blah, 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 blah. Okay, so that's just one way you can provide additional documentation for your little schema file that you have here. Well, then what I'm going to do, and it's not always commonplace to do this by any means, but I'm going to actually define a root element. Now, normally you would just use scheme as your root element, but because I'm creating all this, I'm actually going to create a root element that's going to surround all of these other elements. Elements. And I'm going to call it baseball players. And that is all that I'm going to do with that right now. And then I'm going to come in here and go XS. And you just start describing all of the different elements that you want to use. So I'm going to say name is equal to player name like that. And then I'm going to say type is equal to. And here is what's different. We're going to be able to say that we want this definitely to be a string. This is going to contain string data. And how this would actually translate whenever you're using your XML file is it's actually going to be player name. Like I said, this isn't part of the schema. This is just going to be whenever you use it in XML. And you would say something like like John Smith, and then you would have your closing tag. And throughout this tutorial, I'm going to show you what the XML will look like, as well as the schema for what we're working with here. So this is what you're defining right here, and you're saying it must be a string, and then here is the XML version of that, in which we are definitely using a string. And then you just continue to go through, and I'm going to show you a whole bunch of different data types that are available, and you're just going to type in, again, XS for the prefix, and then element, followed by whatever you're going to put inside of here. So I'm going to say name is equal to current age, and then I'm going to define the data type for it, which is going to be equal to excess integer like that. And then of course, inside of the XML, it's going to be current age is going to be the name of your tag. And then there's going to be a number that doesn't have decimal places inside of it. And we can actually just copy this, save ourselves a little bit of time, paste that down inside of there. And let's say also that I would want to do batting average just to find my new tag. However, if I'm going to be using decimals, well, there you are. That's going to allow me to be able to use decimals inside of here. And some other common number data types that exist are excess, which is going to be positive integer. And that's obviously going to be a positive integer. It's not going to be allowed to be negative. And another data type that would be in here would be negative integer, which of course I think that's self-explanatory. And we'll create another element inside of here. Like let's say starting is our player a starter. And you could throw in Boolean in this situation. And the only values that are available for a Boolean data type is going to be true or false or one or zero. And that is it. Those are all the different values that are available. And we'll just keep on creating different elements inside of here. Paste this in here. Date born. There are many different types of data types available to you. And this would just be equal to date. And then the format for this guy inside of XML is going to be like this. And then it's going to be year, year, year. And then you're going to type in month in two digits. And then you're going to type in day in two digits. And the way this will translate is say 1986, 02, 10, exactly like that. And then, of course, there would be a closing bracket for the date born. If you wanted to get more specific, like let's say you wanted to do next game time and you wanted to get down to a specifics of what time our next game would be, the way this would work ourselves out inside of the XML would be 14 colon 30 colon, and then this would represent the seconds for our date. And that's exactly what that would look like inside of HTML as well. And yes, you could get even more specific, like let's say you wanted to define the final game and you would like to have the date as well as the time. How would you do that? It's actually easy. You just type in date, time, just like that. And then we're going to combine these guys in a little bit different format. Let's copy that. And inside of the XML, the way this is going to look is, let's say it's 2012, which is going to represent our year. 09 is going to be the month. Then you're going to have days. Then you're going to have a capital T and then you're going to have your hours, your minutes, and your seconds. And that's exactly how that would be defined inside of the XML for this guy. And let's just move along here and create a couple more elements. Again, excess element. Let's say you wanted to figure out a duration and you're going to see in a second exactly what I mean by that. We'll say name, time, and this would be the average amount of time that a player would be in the game. Again, I'm just thinking of some reason to use duration and that would be like this, duration, right like that. And then we're going to close that element off. And then the format for this inside of the XML is going to be a capital letter P and then a number, which is going to be represented by years. And then another number, which is going to represent the number of months. And then another number that's going to represent the number of days. And then the capital T telling us that we're getting into time. 
and then another number followed by H, another number followed by M, and then another number followed by S. And that's exactly how it would be defined. And if you'd like to see a real world sort of situation, let's say we're looking for three hours, well, put a three right there, and 15 minutes, right like this, and then we don't have any other additional information, well that's perfectly fine, we can just chop this off right like that. And then since we don't have any other information in regards to seconds, we can chop that off right like that. And that's how you would define a duration of 3 hours and 15 minutes. And if you play around with this, I'm sure you'll figure out the rest of it. Just a little codes you got to memorize or at least have a cheat sheet. You could also come in here and define a URI that you would like to link to. And let's say it's called picture. And if you want to define that you want to use a URI, let's just type in any URI exactly like that. And then all you would do is put a link to a picture or any location on the web exactly like this is a URI up here. So that's all that is. Let's do something a little bit more interesting. Here I'm going to define a custom data type and it's what's known as an anonymous data type because it's going to be able to be used once in the element that is going to be named last tweet. And we're just going to come in here and go excess element name is equal to last tweet exactly like that. And then we're going to close that off. And this is still considered a simple type. We're going to go simple type exactly like that. And then I need to define exactly what my element that I'm going to be creating here is going to be based upon. And what makes most sense to me is for it to be based on a string. So I'm going to go in here and go XS and I'm going to say restriction and I'm going to say I want to base this on XS string because that's what it's going to contain, a string value. And then I can define all kinds of different rules inside of here like I talked about before. Now if this is going to be a tweet, what I'm going to say is XS max length and I can say value is equal to 140 characters and close that off and that is going to make sure that the maximum length for this to be a viable value inside of this element is going to be 140 characters and I could also come in here and define a minimum length just like that and let's say that I demanded it must be at least two characters and while this would greatly limit me I could also come in here and type in length if I wanted to demand that this tweet be exactly 140 characters but in this situation that doesn't make much sense but if you demanded that there would be a specific number of characters inside of a customized element based off of a string like I did right here, that's exactly how you would do it. And then whenever this is actually used, I know this looks really, really complicated, but in the XML, it's just going to pretty much look like this. I hope I have a good game, right like that. So that's how you would be able to come in there and create a very customized type, and this is the XML version of what you just created. And these guys right here, these restrictions that you're throwing in here, are what are called facets. And a couple other different facets that exist, you could say max inclusive, and then type in value, and then inside of these quotes, you would put the highest number, date, or time that can be used. And then, of course, there's also a minimum inclusive. And inside of these quotes, again, right there, you're going to put the lowest number, date, or time that can be used. You could also come in here and type in total digits. And inside of these quotes, you'd put the highest number of digits that would be allowed inside of said element. And you could also do the same with fractions. So if you wanted to define the total number of decimal places, inside of here. Well, inside of there you would put, if you wanted five decimal places, you'd put a five inside of there. So those are a couple other different facets. That's the fancy name for these restrictions that you're putting on your different customized elements. And you could also come in here. There's all kinds of different things you can do. Uh, let's say you wanted to go and again, we're going to create a simple type and it's going to be named position. Again, this is just a regular old element. And again, I'm going to use a restriction just like I did up here. And this is going to be a string. And let's say that I wanted to use a set number of different things. So this is a baseball player. What I'm going to do, I'm going to create what's called an enumeration, just a bunch of choices that you have. One of the choices I'm going to say they have to put in here as a valid string inside of my element I'm creating here called position is going to be pitcher. And then I can create a whole bunch of other valid things that they can put inside of here. So let's say catcher or infielder or outfielder. And that would tell them exactly the different values that were available to them. And anything that wasn't one of these four guys we have right here would be considered invalid. And we could also come in here and go excess, simple type, 
and go name is equal to ID code. And again, we're going to use a restriction here. It's going to help us do our job. And it's going to be a string. However, I'm going to make it very, very specific using what are called regular expressions. And I'm not going to get a lot into regular expressions because I've covered them so many times in the past. If you want to see a regular expression tutorial, check out my YouTube page. I have a gazillion of them. So if I wanted to say, for example, in a regular expression that whatever is entered inside of this element called ID code, should start with two digits. That's exactly how I would do that. And then I demand that it be lowercase letters or uppercase letters, exactly like that, that are either two in length or five. So I'm demanding that this be two digits and then followed by either two, three, four, or five letters for this to be a valid ID code. And that's exactly how you can make extremely tight and very controlling sort of information inside of all of your different elements that you have here. And if that is at all confusing, basically, the XML is going to be very, very simple. This is going to be a valid ID code based off of these restrictions and A, B, C. And there you go. There's a valid ID code version in the XML that would match up to the element that you just created here in this XML scheme. I'm going to cover the rest of this in the next tutorial, but basically I'm going to create another one of these guys. Like, let's say that you wanted to be able to list a whole bunch of different decimal values. For example, you want to have a whole bunch of different values, period. You could put anything inside here. So I'm going to go previous bat average. And this is going to allow the user to enter a list of different batting averages that are going to all be separated by white space. That's how they're all set up. And in this situation, I'm gonna go XS and I'm gonna type in list and I'm gonna go item type is equal to, and I'm gonna say that everything's gonna to have to be a decimal, right like that. And that is the only rule that I'm going to make, but what that's going to allow me to do here is inside of the XML, go previous batting average, exactly like that, and then have it so the user could type in 0.234 space, 212 base and then 253 for example and then of course close out the previous batting average in the XML file. So in the next part of the tutorial I'm going to continue going through a whole bunch of things in regards to XML schemas. Leave any questions or comments below otherwise till next time.